Shalom, giving honor and praise unto the Creator and the Maker of heaven and earth, the Most High Power. This is Yeshua Yisrael of the tribe of Dan. This is part four, presentation entitled Explaining the Proposed Contradictions of the Old Testament. We want to go, brothers and sisters, into Genesis chapter 7, verse 7. And it says, And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him, into the ark, because of the waters of the flood. Now, people will go there and sit there and state that that is making that statement and then they attempt to state that is contradictory to what we are about to read in Genesis chapter 7 verse 12. And it says, And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wives, Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with him into the ark. Now, their so-called argument, if you want to put it in those terms, no offense intended, is that the timing in which they're stating that Noah went into the ark. One, according to them, is stating that Noah went in before the waters of the flood. And the other one is stating that when the flood came is when Noah went into the ark. Let's go, brothers and sisters, into... Genesis chapter 7 verse 7 in Hebrew so we can gain some understanding concerning this matter and it says Wayabo Noak Ubanao We each to unshe banao ito el hateba mipne me hamabul Now one of the things I want to sit there and point out Brothers and sisters, is the fact that it actually sits there and lets you know what time frame we're talking about right here. El Hateba to the ark, Mipne Me Hamabul. It says that Noah and his wives and his sons and his sons' wives went into the ark, Mipne. This word right here, the main, the pay, the noon, and the yod, from the face of. The waters of the flood. So that's what that's talking about right there. The whole word because is not in here. So let it be noted and understood. So a better and more accurate translation is this. And that is Noah with his sons, his wife and his son's wives with him went into the ark from the face of the waters of the flood. Not the average translation that says because of the flood. All right. So when it says in the face of or in the presence of, it means that when the waters were present for the flood, that's when Noah went into the ark. So let that be noted and understood. Now, let's go knowing that back into the book of Genesis, chapter seven, verse 12. And it says, and the earth, pardon me, verse 12. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights and the self same day entered Noah and Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with him into the ark. Verse 13 in the Hebrew. Genesis 7, verse 13 in the Hebrew, and it reads as follows. But Edsem Hayom Hazet, Ba Noach, was shame, was calm, was Yafet. Bene Noach, was Eshet Noach, now, in the Hebrew, it lets you know that the same day in which the waters of the flood began to come in is the exact same day that Noah went into the ark. So it's not a contradictory statement once you understand the linguistics of what's going on. The average version, like many, like in the Masoretic texts or the stone edition of the scriptures or the King James Version, in Genesis chapter 7, verse 7, it states that, And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Now, that's not giving you an actual timeline 
in which he actually went in. The Hebrew in Genesis chapter 7 verse 7 does. And is also confirmed in Genesis chapter 7 verse 13 in the Hebrew. Where it says in Genesis 7 verse 7. We can go over that part once again so it can be noted and understood. Where it says and we quote. Meep nay me hamabu. Wayabo no ak. And Noah he came Ubanaiwa with each toe and his sons and his wife. Uche now and the wives of his sons. Ito with him. El Hateba to the ark. Mipne me hamabu from the presence of the waters of the flood. And then in verse 13, it lets you know the time frame is also confirmed. So that is to say, in the day in which the flood waters began to come on the earth is the same day that Noah went into the ark. So Noah didn't go into the ark prior to the waters of the flood actually coming in. Now, one of the things to also point out is that when the flood began to happen, it was not a flood at first. But those who knew about a flood coming would know, OK, this is the waters for the flood. You understand? It's called in all that getting good understanding. All right. Now. If we will, let's go, brothers and sisters, into Genesis chapter 32, verse 28, if we will. Genesis 32, we are in verse 28. So that way we can gain some understanding concerning this matter. And it says this. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and have prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the, the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. And he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him. And he held up his thigh. Therefore, the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrink, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. Now, one of the things to sit there and let it be noted is that some people like to go here to sit there and state that the scripture that we just read is contradictory to what we're going to read now in Genesis chapter 35, verse 9. And it says this. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel or Israel. Now, one of the things to let it be noted and understood is that you have some people who sit there and state that that's a contradictory statement without realizing one. Genesis 35 is not the same encounter as we've seen in Genesis 32, it says that the Most High blessed him again. So that means that Jacob wasn't even asked what was his name, as in the case in Genesis chapter 32. You understand? Basically, what we're reading in Genesis 35 is a confirmation that, yes, you got this blessing and this name is going to be upon you. You understand? Now, let's understand the logic that some people are trying to employ is that Jacob got his new name as Israel in one place being Peniel. And then according to some of the same people, they're saying that Jacob got his new name being Israel in Padan Aram without reading properly. Brothers and sisters, I like to go into Genesis chapter 35, verse nine. So that way we can gain some understanding from the Hebrew. And so that way we can understand what in the world is going on. Genesis chapter 35, verse nine, if you will. Okay, and it reads as follows. It says, Wayare Elohim El Yaakob Old Bebo O Mepadan Aram Wai Barek Oto Verse 10 Wayomir Lo Elohim Shimka Yaakob Lo Yekware Shimka O Yaakob Ki in Yisrael Yihye Shimka Wayikra et Shemo Yisrael Now one of the things to sit there and let it be noted and understood is what the Hebrew right here is saying. 
brothers and sisters, if we look very carefully at verse 9, it says what? Wayare Elohim El Yaakob, Old Biba O Padan Aram. It says, In the Most High, he appeared unto Jacob again as his coming from or as his coming out from Padan Aram. Wabarek O why Barik Oto and he blessed him. Now the key word that I wanted to point out is this mem that we see right here. With the one little um period looking thing, which is actually in Hebrew called a kirik when you're dealing with the vowels. This is called from the presence or from. This is from that word there. This right mem right here in English we will call that an actual prefix. Me Padan Aram from Padan Aram. Jacob was coming from Padan Aram. And the Most High blessed him. It does not say that while Jacob was in Padan Aram, he got the name Israel again. You understand? So those things like that has to be noted and understood. So that way we can gain some understanding of what we're talking about. Brothers and sisters, I have for a reference. So that way we can see something of what we're speaking about. Now remember from the other video that Padan Aram means the plains of Aram, right? That is the land of what? The Arameans. The Syrian people. Now, the place where Jacob was in Genesis 32, where he got the name Yisrael initially, is, and we quote, in the land of what we call right here, just to show you on the map. Penuel. That's in getting the land later on called in within the tribe of Gad. But if you keep on going up, you get to where the Syrian people were. The people of Damascus. Damascus was the capital of Syria. Syria is the same as Aram. So what Genesis chapter 35 is saying is when Jacob was coming from here, Bebo'o me Padan Aram, it said that the Most High met him again and gave him the name Yisrael again. It does not state in Genesis 35 where Jacob was exactly when he got the name. Genesis 32 states that he got the name Yisrael in the land that Jacob later on called Peniel, also sold at, said as Peniel. But however, the scriptures itself is not exactly showing such a particular case in Genesis 35, where Jacob is not mentioned in what land he was at in Genesis 35. It says the land where he was coming from. So obviously he would have, in most cases, been walking south in Genesis 35. So those things have to be noted and understood that, in concluding that particular part that Jacob having the name Israel in Genesis 35 is not stating what land he got the name in. So thus, another so-called contradiction has been exposed. All right. So let that be noted and understood. Another one that people like to go to. Let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 20. We're going to go in verse 11. It says this concerning the Sabbath. For in six days the Most High made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Most High blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now they're saying that that is saying that the Sabbath is made for the people to remember creation, right? Now, let's go, if we will, into Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15. Because they attempt to state that it's contradictory on the reasoning of the Sabbath for the house of Israel. De Deuteronomy 5, verse 15 says... And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Most High, thy king, brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Shabbat day. Now, that's not contradictory. Contradictory or contradiction would it say, don't remember the Sabbath in reference with the creation. That would be a contradiction. This simply is adding on to what the law is saying or within the same law. So what Israel is to do concerning the Sabbath is to remember the creation and to remember that they was brought out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Remember what Shabbat means? It means day of rest, rest time. When you was in captivity, they didn't have the Sabbath being kept inside of the land of Egypt. As a matter of fact, Egypt doesn't even have a Sabbath. You understand? Like the house that Israel does. So that's another reason how you know the laws of the most most high did not come out of Egypt. Okay. But getting back to this point right here, it is not contradictory. It's just stating that Moses was speaking to the people 
And that doesn't mean that you don't remember the creation, but you certainly are not to forget your deliverance from bondage. Shalom.